are five major elements of Derby Fitness. Strength, agility, power, core strength, and endurance. There's a sixth element that you also need, flexibility. And while it's not to be underestimated, it's outside of the scope of this test. The test is designed to be done at the beginning and the end of most roller derby athletics training programs, or on your own about three to four times a year. Before we get started, here's a few tips to help you get the most out of the test. Attempt the test on a day when you feel relatively fresh, so not the day after a bout or a really hard training session. Do all of the exercises in order and do it the same order each time you do the test so that you can compare apples to apples each time. Use optimal form at all times. Watch the video, check your form in a mirror or ask a friend for help and make sure you're getting it right. And finally, remember that the only person in this test that you're competing against is yourself. So don't worry about it if your scores aren't where you hoped they would be. That's why you're here, to improve. So try your best and just remember, Booty loves you even if you can't do full push-ups. With that, let's get cracking. The cadence push-up test is first. You'll need a metronome or a digital metronome set to 40 beats per minute. You'll do one push-up for every two beats of the metronome. That's three seconds each. It's the top beat that matters. The bottom beat is just a guideline. Keep going for as many reps as you can while keeping in time and maintaining good form. Stop after you miss three cadences in a row. Your score should exclude these last three reps. Some points about form. In the down position, your elbows should be making about a 45 degree angle with your body. Your wrists should be about shoulder width apart. Bend all the way to 90 degrees at the bottom of the push-up. Get someone to watch and keep you honest. If you can't yet perform full push-ups, no problem. You can test yourself doing knee push-ups like this. The agility test is up next. Here you'll just need to tape out a cross on the floor, about three feet by three feet, as shown here. You'll also need a stopwatch or a countdown timer. Begin outside the back left corner of the cross. Start the timer and jump into the back left quadrant then into each quadrant in a clockwise order without touching the line. Your goal is to hit as many quadrants as possible in 10 seconds. It's best to have a friend help you time and count. Here's the test at full speed. So as you can see, my score on that was 31. I did seven full tours of four plus three before the whistle went. Do the test again going counterclockwise. Record your score and average the two scores. Here are some notes on form. You should jump with your feet together as a unit. Don't let them become disconnected from one another. Subtract half a point from your score each time you touch the lines in your test. If you let your arms flail around like this, it will be more difficult to move quickly around the circuit. Just like on skates, if you keep your arms braced and your core tight instead, it will help you. If it's your first time trying this, feel free to take some practice runs before you start your recorded test. For the vertical leap test, you'll need a measuring tape or a yardstick. Tape it to the wall up high. It doesn't matter exactly what height you set it up. This is a standard test used by many sports and employers to demonstrate leg power. You simply jump as high as you can and measure the difference from your standing reach to your reach at the top of the jump. Here are some tips to help you out. First, you can have a friend stand on a chair and read your high point measurement, or you can use a piece of chalk to mark as you jump. Second, the height of your leap is directly related to how deep you bend how quickly you descend. Bend deeply and quickly like you're coiling a spring. Next up, we have the core test. As you know, a strong core is essential for balance, but it also helps with agility and injury prevention. The test works like this. At each stage, your goal is to perform a single sit-up without using momentum and without letting your feet rise off the floor. You must do this test barefoot. Here's a demonstration of each of the stages. In stage one, you bring your wrists as far as your knees. 
Stage two, go just a little bit further, elbows to knees. Now you go further still, bringing your chest right up to your knees. Stage four gets tougher. Cross your arms around your waist and sit up till your arms touch your legs. For stage five, place your hands at your ears, elbows out, and sit all the way up. In the final stage, stretch your arms overhead and sit all the way up without swinging your arms. You do just one sit up in each stage until you reach a stage that you cannot successfully complete. Return to the previous stage and then complete as many reps as you can. Your score is your highest successful stage and the number of reps you completed. Here's what the wrong form looks like. Using momentum to lift your upper body or allowing your feet to lift off the floor. If either of these is necessary for you to complete your sit up, it just means that you're not quite strong enough for that stage yet and you should return to the previous stage. Finally, we are on to the endurance test. We are going to run this as a time challenge. So, how quickly can you complete all of the reps while maintaining good form? Here's the test. We're going to do three rounds of skater strides, lunge jumps, high knees, and squat thrusts. Here's what it looks like. Start your stopwatch and begin. For this exercise, stay low the entire time as though you're speed skating down a straightaway. You don't need to pop up in between. It's not a big jump. Here, both knees should form 90 degree angles in the down position. Keep your front knee aligned over your front foot and keep your torso upright. Try not to lean forward. High knees are easy to cheat on, but don't do it. Knees up to at least your hip level each time. Go slower if you have to. The way to count all the reps in the test is by total number of reps. So 20 skater strides means 10 per side, not 20 per side. Same with lunge jumps and high knees. The rep number listed is a total. The operative word in squat thrusts is squat. So shoot for a 90 degree squat, both here and here. So that's what one round of the exercises looks like. You'll do two more rounds in a row without stopping and record your time at the end. Now that you've watched all the exercises, you are ready to go. I want you to get pumped for this test. There is no reason 